The whole goal of psychotropic prescribing is to generally get drug into brain. Occasionally, we'll use medicines for peripheral effects. You know, somebody has um, a peripheral effect, and we'll use medications for that. But our goal primarily is to get drug into brain. And unfortunately, our body has evolved these mechanisms to keep things out of brain. And this is really the whole concept of what we're talking about with efflux transporters is the role they play at the blood-brain barrier, the possibility for drug-drug interactions involving that process, and the natural biological variability, much in the way there's variability with cytochrome P450. So these efflux proteins are relatively new in the world of medicine. So let's go back to 1940. So after World War II, and people are now starting to treat cancer the way we think cancer should be treated with toxic chemicals. These toxic chemicals, in fact, were stuff that was developed in World War I and were used in a very, very nasty way. But many people started playing around with these agents and realized if you infuse these agents into animals and then humans, you can actually perhaps kill tumor cells. And if you're lucky, not kill the patient too. So the problem was, over the next couple of decades, they found out that people became resistant to agents. And what was very confusing is they said, okay, we gave somebody a, a certain type of drug, they became resistant, so we gave them a drug with a whole different mechanism, but they were still resistant to that. What gives? In the early 80s, it became clear that what the cells were doing was keeping drug out of cell. So when you actually did assays, you could see that, hey, there's no intracellular drug here, it's not accumulating. And this was associated with an upregulation of this certain plasma membrane protein. And that plasma membrane protein turned out to be P-glycoprotein. 